Hello, I am Kathy Adams Clark, and I want to thank you very much for joining me on my channel today. I've been asked to create this video to show you what my settings are on the Canon R6 Mark II. I've used this camera now for about seven months. I've used it wintertime in Texas, steamy jungles of Costa Rica, frozen lands up in Alaska, and then most recently on the Danube Delta in Romania. And this camera, the way that it's set right now, for me, is just perfect for bird photography. I find that I don't miss anything, I get the shots that I want, and I'm incredibly happy with it. So join me for this video, see what my settings are, see if you can match them on your camera, and hopefully you like the Canon R6 Mark II for bird photography just as much as I do. Just as a reminder for those of you that have not seen my other videos, I do own the Canon R3, which is a much more expensive and robust camera. But the Canon R6 Mark II has just become my camera of choice when I'm doing bird photography. So looking at my back display panel under the Q, you will see how I've got my camera set now. Shutter priority with an auto ISO. I'm also using the autofocus area 1, which is the flex zone autofocus 1. That tends to be the one that I use the most. And also on that back display panel, cameras at manual focus right now, that's just simply because I don't have a lens on it evaluative light meter, and then the multi-release um, at high. So this is the way that I photograph birds. Now, to our menus. Menu number one, image quality is raw. You can see that I have dual pixel raw disabled, and then also the cropping is at full. Red menu number two, you can see my exposure compensation is um, set to zero. And by the way, you can get to this function with your Q menu on the back display of your camera, so there's no need for you to come into the menu item to change your exposure compensation. You can also see where my ISO is. HDR is off because we're not going to use this for bird photography. Auto lightening optimizer is just set to standard right in the menu, and highlight tone priority is also set to off. Red menu number three, you'll see that I have anti-flicker shooting is turned off. External speed light control, these are your controls for your flash. We don't need them on right now. And the metering mode is set to evaluative. Once again, you can find this in your Q menu. You see that I have my white balance set to auto white balance. I don't use a custom white balance. And then white balance shift, I don't have. Color space, I do have at Adobe RGB. That gives you your best color space. Picture style, I've set it to auto. Clarity is right in in the menu and I don't have any of the creative filters on. Red menu number five, lens aberration correction up at the top is turned to peripheral illumination correction is on, distortion correction is off, and digital lens optimizer on the bottom is just set to standard and that's if you press your set button to access those. Long exposure noise reduction is set to off and we want it this way because it takes the same amount of time that your shutter speed is to reduce the noise in the photograph and that would delay us in bird photography. Same thing with star, star photography. High ISO noise reduction, I've got it set at standard. Dust delete data, we just use that when we need it. Number six in the red menu, multi-exposure, raw burst mode, and focus bracketing. I've got them all turned off because we're not using all three in bird photography. Raw burst mode we are going to use in bird photography, and I'll tell you about that later. Red menu number seven, my drive mode. Once again, that's set with the Q um, on the info button on the back of the camera. So I'm set at high speed burst. Interval timer is disabled. And because of the way that I have my camera set right now, the bulb timer's turned off and the silent function is turned off. The shutter mode is electronic first curtain. My options are mechanical, electronic first curtain, or electronic. For birds, I'm using electronic first curtain. If I were shooting in a church and needed to be very quiet, then I would 
go on to electronic, but for right now I'm at electronic first curtain. And the release shutter without a card is turned to off. In number eight red menu, my image stabilizer mode is set to on. And I do that by pushing the set button and turn it on. Custom quick controls. I'm not going to worry about this one right now. Custom quick controls isn't important to us with bird photography. The touch shutter is enabled in the event that I'm doing something where I'm not looking through the viewfinder and I want to use the touch on the back to take the picture. Image review is set for two seconds. High speed display is turned to off and meter timer is set to eight seconds. How long does the meter stay on after I've pushed the shutter button halfway down and released it? Red menu number nine, display simulation. Exposure simulation is set to right in the middle. Exposure sim OVF, simulation view assist is set to off. Shooting info display, this is all based on what you want to do. Check the options, see what's best for you. Viewfinder display format, once again, I've got mine set the way I want it, so check the options, see what you like. And then display performance, I have it set at F P S and that's smooth so that my view through the viewfinder is nice and smooth. Red menu number 10. This is for your video so you can see my my items here and that's a whole separate video some other time. Autofocus pink menus. Now these are important to bird photography. So our autofocus pink menu number one. You see that my first item is auto focus operation and it's manual focus because there's not a lens attached. Autofocus area, as I said before, I have it set to autofocus flexible zone autofocus one um, and that allows me to do what I need to do in bird photography. I will periodically change this to one point autofocus and I do this when the bird is in dense brush and I need to not have the autofocus get tangled up in the brush. Otherwise, the majority of the time, I'm shooting birds on flexible zone autofocus one. Whole area tracking servo autofocus, I have this turned off. Subject to detect, I have it turned to animals. I detect, I have it turned to auto. And switching tracking subjects, I have it set to zero. Auto focus menu number two. This is where we have case one, case two, case three, case four, and auto. Experiment with each one of these, but case one is versatile multi-purpose settings. Case two is my favorite. Continues to track subjects ignoring possible obstacles like cattails and reeds and things like that when we're following birds in the marsh. Number three instantly focuses on subjects suddenly entering the autofocus frame. Then this I sometimes will use, um, especially when I'm working on flying birds. Case four for subjects that accelerate and decelerate quickly. I don't really have a need for this one. I haven't used it that much. And then there is an auto case A, and this is for tracking automatically ad adapts to the subject's movement experiment. But as I said, I use two most of the time on birds. Autofocus pink menu number three, one shot autofocus release prior. And I have this set to the little bitty focus dial um, as opposed to release. So that seems to work really well. Preview autofocus is disabled. Lens drive when autofocus impossible is on so that I can focus the lens. And autofocus assist beam is off. We don't need this. This is when the little light comes out and it helps the camera autofocus. We don't need this. It's kind of like on your cell phone. Autofocus Pink menu number four, touch and drag autofocus settings is turned off. Limit autofocus areas, I don't have any of them limited, I want to use them all. Autofocus 
selection control. I'm using my back dial. What your options are your MF button, your multifunction button, or your back dial. I tend to use my back dial, whatever works for you. Sensitivity of the autofocus point select. I've got it set to zero. Orientation linked to the autofocus point. This is if you're in the horizontal mode and then move to the vertical mode, your autofocus point will move with it. So your orientation, um, so it's linked to the orientation. It's a good setting to have. Limit subjects to detect. I don't have any of those turned off. Left or right eye detection. I just have that turned off. I don't really care. Manual focus peaking setting in your pink menu number five. I have that turned on. Super helpful when you're doing macro photography and really helpful when you're doing star photography. This is where whenever whatever is in focus is outlined in a specific color that you choose. The focus guide is turned on and in movie servo autofocus is enabled. Once again, that's my video modes. Autofocus number six, pink menu, electronic full-time manual focus is turned on. Lens electronic manual focus, you'll see that I have it to the little icon with the little circle and then the arrow going to off. That's disabled after one shot. Focus ring rotation, you can decide if you want it to go left or right. I left it the way it came from the RF lens manual focus ring sensitivity. I left that the way it came from the factory. Blue menus. I'm not going to talk much about the blue menus because they're not important for um, what we're doing for bird photography. They're pretty self-explanatory. The same thing with the purple because this is dealing with Wi-Fi transmission and we're not using that a lot specifically to bird photography. Your wrench menu is important and it's the golden menu. I'm just going to let you read down and see what my settings are because there's nothing here that's specific to one bird photographer over another. So you can just see what each one of my menus are set. Wrench menu number three, definitely turn off that beep because the beep is just irritating to everybody else that you're around. There's no need for having that on. And then number four, um, helps you out with the way your screen and your viewfinder display, your screen brightness. There's some good stuff in there just for setting your camera up. Number five, I do use the touch control standard, but you can see all of my other settings there. And then the wrench, number six, you do have the reset so that you can reset everything to the way it came to the, from the factory. And then you've got some other information that's that's helpful. And you can see, once again, where my camera is set. Our custom menu, number your orange menus. Um, this is where we've got all of our custom functions. And what I recommend is if you haven't used a Canon mirrorless camera before, or you are new to photography, don't change many things in these custom menus until you find a need for them. Um, I haven't made a lot of changes back in here. You can see how I've got my camera set for the orange menu number one. Number two, once again, just how I've got it set. Number three, how I've got it set. This is where your what, what your controls are being used for and what your different buttons are being used for. Number five, you can see once again to how I have it set. And number five in your orange menu, just in case you need it, this is where you can clear all custom functions. And last but not least, we have our green menu. And the green menu is my menu. This is where you can put the most common menu items in one menu if you want to. Um, you see that I have raw burst mode turned on on my custom menu under my menu and what raw burst mode is is if a bird is on a branch and we're waiting for it to take off you can auto focus on that bird on the branch hold your button halfway down your shutter button halfway down and the camera will constantly take 20 photos and then repeat and erase the first ones keep going back to take 20 photos and then when the bird does fly off the branch and you move your finger all the way down 
it continues to take to keep all of those previous photos, we're more likely to get that dramatic photo of the bird taking off the branch. So I like raw burst mode in my menu. If you want to add some other of your menu items to your My, my Menu so that they're nice and handy, then all you have to do is go to Configure, and you can configure My Menu. If you want a second My Menu full of stuff, then you can do that. And even if you want a third My Menu, you can do all of that. But I don't really think that they're necessary. So that is how I have my camera set. I hope that that helped you to set your camera up and gave you explanations of why I set um, each one of the menu items the way that I did. Remember to like and subscribe so that you can keep informed of all the upcoming videos that I have. And once again, thank you very much for joining me on my channel today. I appreciate it.